I've always really liked scrolling LED displays. For more than 10 years, I ran a fairly good sized one for a local high school football team, and the constant annoyance of trying to keep the thing running season after season made it really rewarding when it did. I always wanted one of my own, and I finally got around to building one over Christmas vacation along with a friend of mine in Charleston. This one's built out of three strands of GE Color Effects LED Christmas lights, which are basically the coolest Christmas lights ever built. The three strands of lights are arranged together in a 6 by 18 pixel grid by repurposing the packaging material they came in. I just split these plastic grid sections in half, uh, connected them lengthwise with some bolts, and then put the lights in and then zip tied three of these sectors together uh, into a display. It's not quite as rigid as I'd like, but it certainly was quick. Uh, I reused all three of the existing power supplies uh, since I didn't have one supply big enough to drive the entire grid. Uh, my Arduino Mega is also powered off of the same plus 5 VDC that drives uh, the rest of the bulbs. We're using three digital I.O. pins, one for each strand, and also uh, there's a common ground bus established because I very rapidly figured out that serial communication gets very sad if you don't have your grounds tied together. Dumb lesson, but a good one to learn. When building a traditional LED display, you pretty quickly have to solve the problem that you have a lot more LEDs to switch than you have I.O. pins on your controller to switch them with. The GE Color Effects lights kind of cleverly get around this problem by sticking a microcontroller in each and every bulb. Every individual bulb has a controller, a red, green, and blue LED, and a serial in and out port. Uh, they are connected together in the strand in a big daisy chain, and whatever you put in on the input gets forwarded through each bulb all the way to the end. Each bulb is addressed with a 27-bit packet containing the address of the bulb, red, green, and blue color values, and an intensity. Now the really clever thing about the addressing scheme for these bulbs is that each bulb's address isn't baked in from the factory. Uh, every bulb, when it powers up, goes into sort of an address acquisition mode. Uh, the first bulb in the strand, the one closest to the controller, waits for a packet. It's the same kind of packet used to set color and brightness, but it only looks at the address. It sets its own address to the address in that packet and then goes into normal operation. For packets on to the next bulb in the chain. That bulb sets its address from the next packet that's sent, the next bulb sets it, uh, its address from the next packet that's sent, and so on and so on until either 36 or 50 bulbs later you've addressed the entire string. This is pretty clever. It means they don't have to pre-program the bulbs from the factory and they can just assemble them together in as long as a strand as they like. It's pretty neat. For some reason, all these controllers cooperating to pass packets from one end to the other bucket brigade style just amuses the hell out of me. So with a hardware setup like this, the majority of the work to get text to scroll across is in the software, uh, which I can't take credit for. Uh, my friend Jason Beeland, with some suggestions and assistance, put together all the uh, frame buffer and text scrolling code. It's all traditional 2D old school stuff. There's a frame buffer and a uh, font array of uh, 6 by 5 pixel uh, font data which gets blitted into the frame buffer one column at a time and then the frame buffer gets shifted uh, one column every frame and then the whole thing gets dumped out to the display uh, generating the appropriate uh, packets to command each bulb. Even with fairly unoptimized code if you take all the delays out it can scroll far faster than you can read it so there's plenty of room for expansion and once the lights get a little cheaper I'm thinking of at least doubling the size of the array um, right now, that's the only prohibitive thing about this. These lights were $50 for a 36 light strand, so for 108 lights, that's 150 bucks. But hopefully post-holiday, they'll cheapen up a little bit. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, Happy New Year, and good hacking, everybody! Oh, and I almost forgot to say thanks to Darko. His blog post about the bit timing and frame structure and interfacing for these lights uh, was invaluable. It would have taken way longer to figure it out without his hacking. So thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it.